So welcome back to my channel, this is Dom, and it's been a while. Um, it's been a while since I did any Confederacy of the Rhine um, Cleethberg troops. So I thought it's about time I rectified that and got on with it. Um, and at the same time show you that um, one of those things about uh, doing Napoleonic uni uniforms that people uh, talk about a lot is how um, intimidating or they don't like doing white uniforms. These are white uniforms. So let's have a look at it. So I have here um, a selection of Warlord 28mm um, late French Napoleonic troops. And why this is so great to do is the vast majority of these and great coats. <laughs> and troops in great, great coats make life so much easier and quicker to paint up. So I'm really looking forward to just knocking these out of the park. Not every single figure has. Uh, there's groups of them. Some have, some haven't. But majority of these guys have. Um, 24 figures. That's going to be in my battalion. Mentioned this before with my Cleveberg troops. I have... Uh, I, uh, Cleveberg's were, to, were based on standard French um, sort of battalion setup. Which meant they had six companies... 6 into 24, and 24 being the black uh, black powder standard uh, battalion size. 6 into 24 gives you four-man companies, uh, four-figure companies, which means I've got four grenadiers, so these guys. Um, 1812, it's questionable whether they still had the bear skins on them, but it's the rule of cool for me. I like the bear skin, so I'm using the bear skin, so sue me. So that's, the, that's my grenadier company. Um, the other thing that differenti differentiates the French troops um, is that um, the elite French troops, anyway, like Volticas and Grenadiers, as they carried swords, such shape, um, sh small swords. Um, there's a couple of other differences. They're epilepsy. They had um, sort of tagly, tagly, you know, tassely. That's what I meant. Um, uh, um, epaulets. And I believe, actually, in the Berg army, um, I don't know if it's true in the French army, but in the Berg army, only the elites were allowed to wear moustaches. And in fact, I think they had to wear moustaches. I'm not going to bother with that one. Um, but there you go. So this is my granite. These are going to be my Volticas because they've got, um, got the swords. There we go. So four of those. So that's my, light com that's my Voltigo company. That's my Grenadier company. And then this is my uh, well, sort of command group, shall we say. There's an officer, drummer, and a standard bearer. Ready to go. And then the others are just standard fusilier groups. So what I've done, you can see, is, is try and group them together so that they're ready to go. So there's my Grenadiers, there's my Volticas, there's my Command, the others together. And, and ultimately I'm going to be basing them all on these 4x4 MDF bases. So these guys have been stuck down permanently, with, well, <laughs> as permanently as you can with super glue. These guys I've just done with a normal you know, soft Yoohoo type, type glue, um, pointed them in different directions because I like to base, I like to paint holding bases. I've got one of those paint holders but it doesn't work for me so it's just my method um, so they've all been um, sorted into their companies they are um, obviously primed I primed them with um, a Halfords um, light grey spray paint for those outside the UK Halford is a car um, maintenance sh uh, shop and um, they just do really good big spray cans of uh, primer and I just got into using them. I think they're fantastic. They're very reasonable for the amount of paint that you get in them. And I get through a lot of paint. So um, that's why I use that. So they've all been primed. And now first step is going to be um, doing some skin tone and stuff on them. Because that's how I like to do it. Um, now I'm not going to do them all 24 in one go. I'm going to do in groups of eight so that I, again, I mentioned this before in other videos. I like to have um, an objective of getting a group done in, you know, as I do it so that I feel I'm cracking through the unit 
and for sharp practice um, a group standard unit if you like of line troops which these are is eight men so by doing eight and doing eight eight and eight I get through my battalion quickly but it also means I think well that's one group more for sharp practice even though these guys are probably used for black powder but it doesn't matter <laughs> there is logic there but I think the point I'm trying to make is I like I think it's a good thing for me anyway and I would recommend if you struggle with you know where do I start with my figures is to break them up into batches easy digestible batches for me that's eight figures somebody else it might be six it might be four some people I know just like doing one at a time for me mm, takes too long I'm going to batch paint so we'll start with the first eight and I'll be back after the next stage so here we go I've um, done the first few stages of these figures they have uh, I've had given them a um, base color of pale skin for their faces their hands um, then I've also put just some um, I think it was one of the contrast paint I think which would uh, brown for the hair just blob that all on, doesn't matter at this stage how accurate that is. And then the most important bit at this stage, I think, is, is to do the base white coat. Um, I talked about this, that people get a little bit intimidated by doing whites, and having done quite a few now, um, I'll just show you how the methods I've been using. Um, so I started with this uh, Citadel Corax white base colour. It's a really show you inside I mean look how gloopy this stuff is it's really thick and actually what I find is almost dry brushing well sort of heavy brushing should we say over the figure with that stuff is great now I don't worry about catching every last nook and cranny but enough that it sort of gives it a very decent um, coverage now the beauty of these figures as I mentioned before is a lot of them have got great coats on so I'm only doing the legs here and the bit in the middle um, but that's what I've done with these and next what I'm going to do is use contrast paint apothecary white and effectively do a wash over that white this is sort of a grey colour but don't worry about that it does dry much uh, whiter but we're going to give it a we're going to lighten it up afterwards so all I'm doing is just slapping this all over like this Oops. making sure I get everywhere hope I'm not obscuring this with my hand There we go. I'll be back when I've done the others. And probably at the same time, I'm going to do the great coats. Now, the great coats, um, it's important. It's important to do your research. Now, I'm never one that gets completely hung up about 100% um, accuracy. Troops grabbed whatever they could when they were out on the field. So there's a little bit of leeway in what you do. But I do like to sort of get it vaguely right. So I've done the research into what colour great coats that the Confederacy of the Rhine War in 1812, which was the period I'm, I'm doing this uh, brigade for. Um, and it's described as um, uh, pepper grey um, is the colour they're described as having. So I'm thinking I might do basilicum grey. I don't know whether it's going to be too dark, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be back uh, when I've done that and possibly when I've also done the, uh, the Shaco back in a bit progress update um, you can see I've done the great coats using um, contrast basilicum grey I, I do quite like it because it is described as pepper grey still drying but I think that's pretty much what that is I just noticed I missed a bit missed a bit of black um, so I've also done the um <clears throat> the black bits of the of the of the figure so shakos where they're uncovered i've done black um i've done their boots 
I've also done the ammo pouches um, at the back. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I've used, as you can see, um, Templar black contrast paint, which is black. I really, really like. I think it dries a nice consistency. Um, I've also, a number of the figures have got um, Shaco covers on. So I've just done the peaks of the Shakos where they've got Shaco covers on. Um, now you could do them black because as I understand it, there were a couple of methods of covering Shakos. They used a sort of oil skin, which often was a dark color, black maybe, um, but we also used canvas and other things. So I like the opportunity to bring a little bit of variation in color with troops that are going to be pretty monotone, really. So I'm going to do a mixed bag of um, sort of sandy color and a sort of light browns just to sort of denote various covers that they've got over the top of them. Um, but you can see the figures are coming together nicely. Um, still look very basic at the moment, but don't worry about that. Um, oh, I've just seen he's got a pair of shoes on, attached on his back of his uh, backpack. Didn't notice that. I'll just quickly paint those. The boots I've done black, um, just because they would have been. Let's just quickly do those. Now next up, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is finish off the, the canvas covers on the figures. Um, just check there's no other pairs of boots or anything on the backpacks. The Perry ones often have them. Oh, there's another set there. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to... Um, what was I saying? God, distractions. Distracting myself there. Um, I'm going to finish off the... The, how, the Shakos for those that have got the canvas bags on them. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do the backpacks. Now the the again the looking at looking at the sort of French and also Napoleonic, uh, sorry and Confederacy of the Rhine uh, backpacks. They tended to be a sort of fur, so I'm going to use Gorgon to fur for the backpacks. Um, better roll at the top. I don't know yet. I need to check that out. I can't remember what colour they wore, but I'll do a different colour for those just to make them stand out again. Um, and other than that, yeah, we're getting there. So um, we'll start on, let's say, next up, backpacks, um, the bedroll, Shaco's finished. Um, we'll, um, I think that'll probably be it for the next stage. And then I'll come back with the more sort of, I guess, crucial bit for popping the figure, um, and that is doing the facings and the collars and cuffs. Um, so back in a bit. All right, so progress update. Uh, the figure's looking pretty advanced now. Um, you can see I finished off the skin tone. Um, so on the base pinky colour, or pale colour, I put on the um, uh, contrast uh, Dark Oath Flesh over the top. And I kind of like the effect it gives. I do that fairly my standard of go-to approach now with uh, skin tones. Um, that's going to have a wash over it, but at the moment that's looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's... Yeah, I can also done the backpacks, you can see. Uh, use the gun... The gur, what is it? Gore Grunther Fur Contrast Paint over there. Also... They've got a little fur line water bottles on the side there, so they're done as well the same way. Uh, the backpacks, sorry, backpack um, bedroll rather, I used uh, Space Wolf Grey because it's a sort of nice, you know, it's a nice grey colour really, just like it that way. Um, so that's the bulk of the sort of uh, bulk area done, bulk of the bulk area. So next up, we're going to do a little bit of the, the bit that really makes um, any kind of white figure, particularly the Cleve Berg pop. Uh, I'm going to use the um, my ever-faithful game colour, Azure Eritreco, electric blue. No idea where I got this from, um, but I've used it one heck of a lot. So a bit of a shake, put some on the paper. And the thing about Cleve Berg troops, which is really handy they're pretty much the sa same um what they wore for each regiment now uh, this is actually my 
5th Regiment, or 5th Battalion, sorry. Um, so that's uh, the blah, 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 one, two, three, four. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's my 5th Battalion. But it doesn't really matter for these because they're the same. So all I'm going to do is do the collars in this blue. Okay, and the um, epilepsy, also a blue. The pom poms on the fusiliers are blue. What's the beauty of this is it does give a bit of colour, as I say, to a fairly doer looking unit without it. So then we're going to do the cuffs. Which also helps to line the skin tone that we've just done. And the turn backs a very fine, I think it's a number one brush. It's got a bit of a stray bristle there, I've just noticed. I have to try and get rid of that. Do the turn backs on the figure. Imogen singing away merrily upstairs. I probably can hear that. Sorry about that. It's Sunday morning when I'm doing this. Family time. Right, so that is the bulk of the sort of um, well, cuffs, collar, turnbacks all done. Now the thing with the Cleve Berg, they have this sort of panel here, which is marked on... Uh, now you can hear the cat. She wants attention too. Yeah, all right. The, the middle bit here, on on which is modelled on all these French troops, because the French had... I don't know what colour they had there, but it wasn't uh, for the Cleve Berg. It's this pale blue. So I do that before I do the cross belts, because the cross belts I'm going to go over the top, and that allows me to correct any misses, any mistakes, but it also allows me to um, get a brighter white, because this white is quite a dirty grey white, as you saw. So, yeah. So I'll be back when I've done all these and um, show you what it looks like. Right, there we go. That didn't take too long. So you can see I've done all the facings, uh, the bobbles, the pom-pom, sorry, on the on the shakos, um, turnbacks where you can see them, collars um, and cuffs, and also epilepsy on the middles. And now, again, the beauty of doing things with great coats on was that, um, well, there's some debate so I've read quite a lot of sources which are debating whether or not the great coat had cuffs and 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 so forth done in the colour. Now, luckily, uh, an epaulets as well. Um, luckily, these warlord figures they don't have epaulets on them, so I didn't need to worry about that. So all I've done is the collars in the blue uh, and left the cuffs as they were because I just think they probably wouldn't be on balance. Um, so that's those eight done. Um, come together quite nicely. Now I have to let that really dry. Um, a lot of these stages you can sort of almost overlap them because the paints dry pretty quickly anyway, but I do find this electric blue takes a little bit longer to dry than others, um, other acrylics. So I'm going to let that really dry solidly and then I'm going to come back with um, a brighter white and do the cross belts. Um, and also touch up on the areas that I've inevitably sploshed on with my um, other colours. Um, you always do. Okay, so here we go. Um, the cross belts have been done. I just used a standard white paint. Um, used the opportunity to touch up um, where I'd sort of splodged on the uh, white um, of the trousers and stuff. Uh, finished off the backpacks. Just again, just a bit of touch up. I mean, the thing is, you're always going to get a little bit of um, sort of wandering paint. So, you know, don't worry about it. It's, you know, try and be as accurate as you can, but you know you're going to have to go back and touch it up at some point. 
Um, what else have I done since I last did this? So I've done the musket. Uh, musket, I just used this mahogany brown, which I really like for the musket from Vallejo. Um, and just run the, the paintbrush up as close as you can to it. Nice and, you know, nice and wet um, with the paintbrush with water and then the paint just to let it really run on there. Then once that's dried, I've done the um, sling of the, of the muskets, just used um, a sort of, I don't know, it's a sort of khaki colour. And then for the barrel, um, you know, you can spend a lot of time doing these, but all I did was just get a silver and just run the paintbrush up the outside or the top edge of the barrel, just making sure I picked out where the flints are and the bayonets, of course. In fact, I've just missed a bit, I've just seen. There you go, you always do this. Just missed a bit on the back of the bayonet there. Never mind. But yeah, that's all I do is just like this, just get the paintbrush and just run it up using the side of the brush. I just find that's the best way. Um, these guys have little silver buttons, so I've just picked out the buttons on the um, on the cuffs and also the uh, turnbacks there. Um, what else? Pretty much done. Other than that, put a little. They have little plates on their um, uh, on their shako, so I've done that, and pretty much that's it done. So. Having done all that, just pick out that silver button there, just a smidge more. So having done that, we need to just let that dry thoroughly. And then I'm going to give it a thorough wash. And we'll see what it looks like after that. Okay, situation report on these Cleavebergs. They've um, basically been finished off. I've stuck them down to the bases. So they're now on their four to a base bases, four to a base bases. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I've also given them a wash. I used um, non oil straight out the pot. Um, I don't mind it because I, I like that sort of dirty look that they get. And I'm going to give it more of a good dry brush at the end. Um, but I think this, this kind of works well. You can see it better with the the whiter uniforms of the command group. It makes the edging of the belt stand out and doesn't deaden down the colour too much at all. Um, so yeah, quite happy with how they've come out. So next up is going to be um, basing. Now I get asked this more often, or comments made on my videos more often, I think, than anything else. And it's so silly because they're so easy to do. Um, you know, because oh great basing looks fabulous. And I think I cheat. I cheat. So in here I have a pot of I think this is Mediterranean uh basing from Geek Geek Gaming or Luke's APS if you'd rather. Um this is his ready-made basing material, and I use that all the time. I have a big pot of PVA glue that I got from a hardware store, Wix, I think it was in the UK. Actually, it might have been the range, actually, now I think about it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So let me just show you how I do this, just so. Ooh. Just getting the, getting the glue open is more of a challenge. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, stuck down. So, old kiddies paintbrush. Don't want anything decent, that's for sure. Let me just move that away. One day I'm going to drop that all down myself. Take the figure or super glued on. Make sure the super glue is well and truly. Um, just move that over a bit. Make sure the super glue is well and truly dried. Big dollop of glue. Splodge all over the base. It's nothing more complicated than that. With nice coverage. Splodge, splodge, splodge. And 
then we delp it in there and that's done so there we go nicely covered with all the glue now got my funny little spoon here just shovel it all on the base Pat to get rid of the worst of it. It's a bit there. I still see a bit of the glue shining through. There you go. Whoop. <laughs> God damn my fingers. There you go. All done. So I'm going to do all of them, all of the bases, exactly the same way. Leave that to dry really thoroughly. Then I'm going to give a, a spray varnish with a, an Army Painter matte varnish, which seals the figure and the paint job on the figure, but also helps to seal in the base material even more. To be honest, this stuff doesn't tend to come off that much anyway. If you lose, use a decent amount of, uh, of uh, PVA glue, but this, I find the... Um, the varnish seals it as well and helps it really reinforced. Then, well, I'll come back and show you what I do next. Okay, so um, these have all uh, dried now. They've had a, um, a spray varnish of um, Army Painter um, matte varnish over the top. And you can see it sort of helped to stick down the bases. You can see a bit of the pudding bases on some of these figures. Um, but it's put a nice protective coating over all the figures and actually I think finishes them off really nicely. I do, uh, we had this discussion on the, on the plastic crack, plastic crack podcast, hard for me to say, uh, on one of the Monday nights and, um, I was surprised how many people don't actually varnish their figures. I, I always varnish my figures as much to bring the figure together. I think somehow it just seems to help that kind of deadening of the edges if you know what I mean on the on the colors um, so I always do it anyway as well as the protection it gives you so there's the six blocks ready to go um, so next up I'm just gonna hide some of those bases by getting some tufts and just sticking them um, around the bases just to sort of bring that to just to sort of I say hide the hide the pudding bases uh, bases which are showing up in some places but also to break up the the flatness of the base now you could do this and I used to do it for years um, with a palette with a sort of blunt knife like this and just plaster plaster <laughs> um, all over the base just to make them up and then contour them and what have you and put rocks in them and and yeah it just it was fiddly you had to get in amongst the figures you'd end up getting plaster on the base on the actual figure itself and I just couldn't be asked with that so I find this Luke's APS much easier, much quicker to handle. So that's what I do. Um, but the trade-off is I then have to use tufts to help sort of bring out the, um, stop the uniformity of flatness of the base. These little stones help, but they don't do enough. Oops. And also you, you can see the bases uh, in most places. So we use some tufts, stick them down to clear them out, to hide the bases. Also, what I will do is just a really gentle, and I mean gentle, dry brush over the top of these figures um, with, um, and generally I use an off color, sort of a sandy color. Um, sometimes I've used white. I think because these are predominantly not pure white figures, I am gonna use my normal method, which is to use some Iraqi sand. Um, and do it that way because I think it'll be it'll work better on the guys in the great coats. Let's let's just do one of them while we're while we're so underneath you you can't see it. There's a piece of newspaper. So I've got my Iraqi sand. I've got my little army painter. This is the small brush that I showed in a video a while back. I purchased this their new ones. As you do with all dry brushing, you take virtually all of it off. And then you just rub it over the figure. And it just brings out, if you get too much, and just rub it off. Oh, 
And I could do this before I base them, but I find it easier to hold them when they've got the base. My poor old arthritic fingers just struggle a bit to hold, so I like to do it while they're on the bases. I think that's come out quite neatly. So, just a bit there. Yeah, really pleased with those. I'm going to finish up doing the rest and then put the tufts on and then you'll see what they look like when they're finished. And there you go. There's the battalion finished. 24 figures. Um, my fifth battalion of um, Cleveburg troops ready to join um, the uh, Berg Corps for 1812 that I'm representing. So, as you saw, really, really simple way to paint um, white uniforms. These aren't completely white, but you saw the process I go through. I, I, you know, having I was the same. I was always a little bit nervous about white uniforms. I think they have this reputation: white, yellow red to a degree to sort of have a bit of a reputation of being quite hard to paint and look good at the end of it um, but this seems to work for me um, yes they're a bit dirty and dusty but I like that in my figures anyway um, so I'm quite pleased with the with the overall effect so simple to do simple to use um, and simple to produce another battalion ticked off the list uh, the standard incidentally um, this was just one I picked up on the internet. Somebody was uh, does designs of flags, and um, I just picked it up. Um, I'll try and remember to put the link in the description down below. You can see the Grenadier Company at the back here. Oops, a bit of glue stuck there. Uh, the Voltiger Company beside it, and then the rest of them are just standard Fusilier battalions. Um, yeah, not much more to say about them. Just really pleased with how they've turned out ready to see some action in my bolt action games anyway hope you found that useful interesting entertaining all the above um hope you found something useful in it um if you struggle with white paint uh, white uh, uniforms that's just how i've done them um it's not right and it's not wrong just how i've chosen to do them you find your own route uh, but hopefully that gives you some ideas at least to find your own route Hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay well. I hope you managed to get a bit of painting done, a bit of gaming done. If you ever get out of this lockdown, if you're in the UK or in England, um, you're going to be in lockdown for a little bit longer, but hopefully not too much longer and we might be able to get some gaming done again. Anyway. All the very best. See you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.